Hello, I'm Amy Zawi with the Jerusalem Connection Red Alert Report for Wednesday, June 13, Defending Israel with Reason. Since the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, the latest tactic for the terrorist organizations has been to violently target Israel with their usual hatred, but do it in the name of protesting the embassy move. Of course, this is just another excuse for violence. And the media reports as if protests ongoing are with peaceful uh, dissenters, when in fact even the PA and Hamas admit that these events are populated by known terrorists and their goal is actually to be violent. Video actually exists of a Palestinian father putting a rock in his perhaps four-year-old son's hands, carrying him to the line where the IDF soldiers are positioned, and yelling at his child to throw the rock at the soldiers so that they can shoot him. This is so that propaganda can be established showing IDF shooting so-called innocent children. Not only is this a blatant form of child abuse by the dad, the child is fearful and crying and trying to run back to his dad as the soldiers are bending down to talk to him in gentle voices and they carefully and slowly move back when the child raises his hand to throw the rock. The IDF soldiers are not shooting innocent children even when they're being offered up as sacrifices by the Palestinians. You know, not too much seems to have changed in the land since Adam Abraham brought Isaac up to Mount Moriah to defunct once and for all the notion of child sacrifices. Perhaps not everybody was listening. However, some of these pro-Palestinian media sites have even, and some mainstream media sites, have even used cut-and-paste methods to edit together some sort of story to vilify the IDF as being too heavy-handed or oppressive when the only goal of the IDF is to indeed defend their own forces and keep their civilians safe. As you post responses on media sites that offer comments areas, keep in mind these error-filled and carefully edited with lives and omissions do have a place for us to retort. However, some people accuse a poster or a responder of anti-Semitism or some other immoral position and get into an emotional name-calling uh, conversation or fight, as it were. I say, instead, we should present facts and insights. And I'm not saying this all has to be done in some loving voice, but certainly the more objective our responses are, even if they're a bit fighting, is it would be better than returning fire with some emotional name calling. Camera on Campus's East Coast Campus Coordinator, Leal Oslin, recently published an article noting that in the current news cycle and in social media, many people are ignorant and hateful in their comments on the ongoings. So instead of pointing a finger of hatred at these folks, let us instead engage in a conversation that explains how and why the poster's presuppositions might be incorrect. Perhaps we can include facts about the incident at hand, or some history or context, or point out an omitted fact. People don't want to be accused of being immoral in their positions, but it may take some facts for people to realize their position is not as moral as they think, or neither are their sources. And I'm not saying that all of our followers, Christian Jews and otherwise, are being name callers and over emotional toddlers hurling insults across the internet. I'm just saying that sometimes I have seen people with incomplete thoughts and a bit of snark in their retort from what I would say is our side of the position, which would be pro-Israel or at least let's find out the facts. These kind of emotional retorts and name calling do not bring the conversation any further. If I may quote a bit of Oslin's article for a moment, I think he brings up a point we have to consider when we engage in public discourse in or about our defense of Israel, whom we love. Perhaps more important, we must remember that we are speaking with human beings, flawed, beautiful, imperfect human beings whose opinions, regardless of the confidence with which they are delivered, are mostly uncertain attempts to make a sense of our world. Accordingly, patience and kindness should be from the foundation of our persuasion techniques, not because of the inherent goodness of these qualities, but because they are the most powerful tools to opening a person up to change. As allies of Israel, it is imperative that we remember that the messenger is the message. A few more words on patience. No one should change their no one will change their views overnight, especially not on a topic as contentious as this one. Patient in, in this context means not only having the endurance to offer our perspective as a person's opinions evolve, but also having the poise to remain calm when a disagreement arises. 
Entering into a conversation and escalating it with personal attacks and then leaving it does not win our way any supporters. If we cannot devote the time and energy necessary to be in these frustrating situations, then perhaps it's better to stay clear of the conversation until we can fully invest ourselves. He goes on to say, I certainly do not claim to have an understanding of how to navigate every single conversation the Zionist community might find itself in. In some people's, and some people's minds are made up and the reconciliation will never be possible. I believe, however, that simple rules, understanding, kindness, and patience can encourage people to reconsider their positions at the very least and enhance the quality of the conversations we have with one another. And if I may add, with a tone of understanding, kindness, and patience, we actually can present to readers facts and context and history that they may be then willing to accept and consider. You know, the Bible is full of uh, advice on how we should handle our public discourse in speech and in writing and nowadays on the internet. I'd like to share with you a few key verses that come to mind when I think about this topic. Proverbs 15, 2. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge acceptable, but the mouth of fools sprouts folly. Proverbs 14, 3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod on his back, but the lips of the wise will protect them. Proverbs 12, 6, the words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. Ephesians 4, 29, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word that is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear or read. Let's be wise, let's be upfront, let's be uplifting in our speech and our posts to bring about what we are all working for, that is the truth to be acknowledged and the lies uncovered and exposed. Shavuotov, have a great week.